Nothing compares. to say is to say thank you. Thank you for your love, for your kindness and your mercy. Thank you because you came to save us. You came to redeem us. You came to deliver us. You came to set us free. What shall we say than to say thank you? Thank you for coming for us. Thank you for the salvation of our soul. Thank you for redeeming us from the wages of sin. Father, thank you for bringing us out of darkness and you brought us into your kingdom. Father, we appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, O Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords. Father, we surrender myself unto you this morning. Take charge, take control, O Lord. Father, in the life of your children, let power change and do, Lord. I don't know the desire of your children from the beginning of 2021 and 2021 is about to close father every desire of your children father power must change hand this morning in the mighty name of jesus i will turn every of their desire to testimony oh lord in the mighty name of jesus thank you our lord and our god for in jesus mighty name we have prayed praise the lord praise the living jesus the lord bless you choir more anointing and great grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Good morning and Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. You're welcome to your father's house. The almighty God will keep you uphold you. The one that you see to eat, that you see December, even up to this moment, he will see to eat that you shout Happy New Year to 2022. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So the message I have for us, you know, we've had many messages about the born of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the season. This is the time. But the message that the Almighty God asked me to share with you is that our most common desire, our most common desire. And so you will agree with me that everyone, beginning of the year, you have your resolution. And so some churches, they will say, bring God your resolution. And they will pray over it. And so we have desire. We have aspirations. And some of us, we have been ticking it one by one. And some of us, we've not been able to tick anything. That's what the Lord has done for us. But I am assuring you this morning, for the fact that you are alive, for the fact that you are breathing, for the fact that you can stand on your two legs, for the fact that you can lift up your hand, for the fact that you can go to the bathroom and come out is the greatest testimony that you can ever have. That is the desire. Desire of many people is so that I can go to the bathroom. Desire of many people is so that I can just see the next day because of this sickness. But the almighty God preserve you. I pray that he will continue to uphold, he will continue to strengthen you, he will continue to keep you, he will continue to sustain you in the mighty name of Jesus. When you go with me to the book of First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 18, First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4, technical, you will be fast with me because we have a lot of prayer this morning. And the Almighty God will help us as we go along in Jesus' name. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was mixed to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Verse 2. Saul took him that day. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Verse 4 and the last. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Another Bible reading that we have because of time, they will just slide it because it's up to 1 to 42. That's First Samuel, the same First Samuel. Chapter 20, verse 1 to the end, which is verse 1 to 42. So they will slide it, but I will continue in the message this morning. Because we are going to get there the Bible passage. And I so much lo love Jonathan. And we will see the reason why Jonathan did what he did. Even though he knew that he's supposed to take over the throne. But he got that revelation. That the throne is not for him. That God has anointed somebody. And it is better for him to knit with that person. That God has anointed. And we see that in future. This single act that Jonathan did. Paved a way for his family. And I pray for someone this morning. You have been doing the act of kindness. You have been so good to people. And at the end of the day. It's as if they pay you with evil. The almighty God asked me to tell you. That he has prepared somebody. Somebody that he will reward you mightily. He has prepared it for you. Unknowingly to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And he said even if you don't get the benefit. That your children, children. Next, next generation. They will benefit from what you are sowing right Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So what is desire? A desire I went through the, you know, the, is, uh, what did they call it? Dictionary, you know, I went through the English dictionary, through Bible dictionary to know what desire. So we have different meaning here, different type of the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, what desire is. So what is desire? Number one, a desire is a strong feeling of wanting to have something. You have that strong feeling. You want to have something. Or, or wishing for something to happen. That is your desire. I just wish that this COVID will disappear. That is my desire. Praise the Lord. Because since COVID, we normally have full service. That will be, you know, looking for extra seat. But now look at it. COVID kept people in. So my desire is let this just be. That the, tomorrow they announce all over the world. The COVID is free. You know, we are discovered, de declared free from COVID. That is my own desire. And it will surely come to pass in Jesus' name. So, 
where you wish, another divination, where you wish, where you want, where you crave, where you covet. Desire is a feeling and nothing more. It is your brain's way of telling you that you are missing something in life. When your brain is telling you that, oh, I'm missing something in life. This ought not to be. This is the way things should be. Then that is desire. Because your brain is telling you that this is what you have to be. This is the level you should be. You should have moved up from this level. Then you begin to desire for higher ground. When you know that the ground you have is not enough. Then it's only spirit that will open your eyes. Some people, they are there. They don't even have a clue. No desire, no nothing. They are just, okay, once I can able to make my hand me, once I can just eat, pay my bills, I'm okay. I don't desire house. I don't desire. I'm even okay to be paying people's mortgage for them. Either the rent is 3000 or 4000 Just for me, I just want to work and they work, work, work. They never amount or get something because they don't desire greater eyes. I pray for every one of us this this morning, you begin to desire for greater heights in the mighty name of Jesus. So you have a goal in mind. Desire is when you have a goal in mind. I'm not just talking of a goal that you set a goal for yourself. I'm talking of achievable goals, smart goals that you set for yourself in the next one year, in the year 2022, in the year 2023. Where do I see myself? As we have many days now to the end of the year. Today is 26. We have five more days to the end of 2021. What is your smart goal? What is your achievable goals that you are put down by this 2022? Despite the COVID. Because the Bible says when they say there is casting down, there shall be lifting up for the children of God. And as children of God, you did not allow COVID to determine your desire. You did not say because of COVID, I cannot get this one. You prepare yourself that I'm moving forward despite all this situation. And the Almighty God will make your desire to come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. I say desire can actually be quite a good and necessary part of being, of being human. It's part of us. We desire. We desire. We don't, we'd never human being, those of us who did economics, Human being, we are never satisfied. We always want more and more and more. But the most important thing is when you prioritize on the scale of preference. That's what separates everything. And the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. So you have a goal in mind. Desire keep an ideal person excited and willing to proceed with their dreams. So I pray for you this morning. Because of that idea that heaven had deposited in you, you begin to move to achieve those ideas and to translate it to positive things in the mighty name of Jesus. I say desire urge you to do what it takes to make it a reality, to make what to that dream that you have. Dream of greatness, great dream of moving forward, dream of achieving purpose in life. So the desire will urge you to be able to walk towards making that dream a reality. And every dream of progress, every dream, that's why in the book of Habakkuk, he said, write this thing down and run with it. Everything, revelation that you have written down, that God has given you, it will begin to, it will begin to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. I put it here, I say, desire is fuel by your why. By you, why can't I? Why can't I move forward? Why do I have to be in this situation? Why can't I be a manager? Why can't I move to be a supervisor in that place where you are working? You know, and I know if uh, those who are first who are working as a support worker, every home, there's a manager in that home. How did they become the manager? Don't just begin to work, work, work. How, what can you do? What extra step I can, can I make? What extra step can I do to make it, to be the manager of that home? To be the supervisor, even if I can't make manager, because maybe three homes manager, let me be the supervisor of that home. What does it take? Begin to desire. Begin to ask that question. Why? Let that why fuel your desire to become great in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are going to look into three 
at least three of some of our most common desire. And those of our common desire, I'm going to use three people in the Bible as our case study this morning. So what is your desire? Number one, our most common desire is material desire. Is it good to have material desire? Yes. Thank God for the Bible study. Anybody, if you don't have money, if you have poverty, there is no way you can advance in the kingdom of, in the, in the work of kingdom. And so you have to desire it. And who is the first woman? In the Bible that desired it, when you look at the book of Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16 verse 14, in the book of Acts 16, 14, and certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Titeria, which worshipped God, heard of us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken, which were spoken of Paul. So we are looking at Lydia. If you open with me, if you look at different translation, understanding of this Bible passage, Lydia, she's a wealthy woman. You know, those who sell clothes, it's Aleko, those who sell lace, that they travel to Dubai, travel to everywhere, and they have that attire. Any attire you want, be it purple, be it pink, whatever color, she's a wealthy woman selling textile fabrics. Who know? Maybe she even have company that produce fabric to her. The Bible did not say, I'm just giving it to you. Praise the Lord. So Lydia was a businesswoman who dead in Texas. She was, you know, one of the poor first converts as a Christian. You know, that's what the Bible says if you read that Bible from beginning to the end. So can we imagine what it took for a woman to succeed in business in such male-dominated environment in those days? But she desire, she move on and she move. I don't know how many male that time, because we're talking about what years over, you know, maybe almost 2000, over 2000 years, you know, she does, she, she's been in the business and in the male dominated society. She was so successful. She owned her own home. If you read for that, she owned her own home because the first church was hosted in Lydia's house. So she owned her own home and the home was large enough to become the meeting place for the first church in the history of Europe. So his church, his home was the first history church in the history of Europe. The first church was in the home of this businesswoman. Now, if your desire to make money, the, the, here is the cross of matter. If your desire to make money, now choke, you know, choke out your generosity. He now choke how you, you know, how you serve God. Then you have to check yourself. If you find yourself because you want to make it, you desire it, and you are doing 35 jobs, and you don't have time for God, check yourself. That is the cross of the matter. God wants us to be rich. He wants you to make riches. He wants you. He wants you in good health. But at the same time, you need to pay attention to your health. You need to pay attention to the things of God. It's not about making the money, making the money. Do three jobs, do five jobs, as God has given you the strength and the grace. As you are amounting it, did you set aside, aside time to serve God? Did you set aside time to follow God? Did you desire that, you know, prosperity or the job more than your Lord Jesus Christ? Out of seven days, just one day. And out of that one day in the church, just let's say two and a half hours to listen to the word of God. And the almighty God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I said the Lord will make, help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So this is the time to reevaluate what we are doing. This is the period for us. By next week, Sunday, it will be January, I mean, January 2nd, 2022, New Year. This is opportunity for us. We have just one week to reevaluate our life. To reevaluate, I want to make money. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be auctioneer. I want to do that. I want to be this. All these are vanity upon vanity. Solomon, the wealthiest person in the world, he summarized it. He said, after all this is vanity upon vanity. The almighty God 
will help us to reevaluate our life in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't get me wrong. Making money is good. You know, creating products is good. Keeping people employed and glo that glorify God is very important. But in all that you get, get knowledge, get understanding, and follow God. And the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 say, It is God that giveth the power, the power to get wealth. You know, it is God that give you power to get wealth. So have you ever wondered why you enjoy assembly? You know, maybe you're skilled. I'm just bringing this one out. Maybe you, you know, praise the Lord. Maybe you have a skill that you have not been using. You like to fix up things. You like, if you check yourself, maybe you are in a technical line. I see some people, I have encouraged some people, you know how to cook. Yeah, you go to work, then begin to make card. You know how to sew cloth, begin to make all those extra things. And before you know it, sky will be the limit for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So what is Psalm? Let us read this Bible passage before we go to the number two desire because we're going to pray today. Psalm 35 verse 27b. Verse, I mean, Psalm 35 verse 27b say, The Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God has pleasure in your prosperity. If anybody is preaching to you, oh, that church that they, are, they have plain. Yes, if I have money. Ah, God provide for me. I will buy my own jet too. I'm telling you, I will buy my own personal jet. If God provide, so far I'm not stealing. I will not steal God's money. Whatever I have, my God will supply my needs to me according to his riches in glory. So far I did not steal. And God has written that I'm going to have limousine. I will buy that limousine no? if it is in the agenda of God. If it is not going to hinder God. So it is God. He delights in your prosperity. Don't go to these people that say, ah, the more you have money, forget about God. Or the more money you have, the more whatever. The more money you have, the more you bless the kingdom of God. The more you serving God with that wealth that has placed in your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. So this money, this morning, let your desire for material sources be to glorify God and to bless others. Glorify God and bless other. And when you bless other, don't go ahead and begin. Ah, you see that clothes? I bought it for that sister. Ah, ah, is this your suit? I love this suit. You remember last year I gave you this suit? Abba, praise the Lord. The Lord will bless us in the mighty. Haven't you know that there are some people like that? And they say, ah, this shoe is good. Hmm, I love this shoe. And you remember that two years ago I gave you that shoe. Ah, I wish I can take it back. The Lord bless you. The Lord will repeat. The Lord will change your mind if you are in that category in Jesus' name. Desire number two, desire to achieve. Everybody wants to achieve. Nobody wants to just remain in one place. And let us look at the book of, because God has already commanded you to be an achiever. So don't say that, oh, maybe I'm not, you know, maybe God did not, you know, categorize me among the people that we achieve. No. God has already from the beginning that we will achieve, you will have dominion. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. What is the first thing that God said to Adam? He said, then God blessed them. And God said to them, five things here. Be fruitful, one. Multiply, two. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the body of the year and over every lifting, living things that move on the earth. So who is telling you that you are not an achiever? You are an achiever in the mighty name of Jesus. So I see five things there. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. I pray that all these five things will be make manifest in your life. You will be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. You will multiply in the mighty name of Jesus. You will replenish in the mighty name of Jesus. You will subdue every enemy of your destiny, of your progress in Jesus' name. And you will have dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. So the reason you have such a strong desire to accomplish something in life is because God has created in your DNA. This is God. He has created it in your 
your DNA. So when you are having desire, don't begin to say, I kill that desire. I kill desire to have dominion. No, don't kill it. God has already created it into your DNA. So people are more motivated by achievement than Paul the Apostle. Honestly, that's why I love Paul the Apostle in the book of Acts 2024. 20, Paul has this to say in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 24. He said, but none of these things, praise the Lord. Apostle Paul said, but none of these things move me. Neither can't I myself, I, I, neither can't I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. The ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So when we talk of our achievement, he's a lawyer. He has everything. But what did he say? What did that post support? They are not sliding out 2024. That's where I read it. We've passed uh, uh, Genesis. So what is joy? What is Apostle Paul say? He said, none of these things, of these achievements. So that is to tell us that he have a lot of achieve, achievement. And so we need to get to that point. None of these achievements can't myself dear to myself. Because the life that I live, they belongs to him. And I know I'm going back to somewhere. Whatever I achieve, I'm not holding on to it. I want to release. I want to be a blessing to the left, to the right. So that at the end of the day, it will be written of me that I came, I conquered, and I gave people, and I left my mark. And the almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. That we not eat from the can, drink the can, and sit on the can. How did they do, you know, eat all everything? You can and drink the can and sit on the can. The almighty God will help us in Jesus name. So God did not take away Paul's desire, desire to achieve. God did not take it away. So don't be in that category that because I remember in those days, one of my friends, she gave me a gold. I think that's one when they started the, uh, uh, not MFM. I think either MFM or Deeper Life that you should not watch TV in those days. I don't know how many of us remember. I think in the 80s or so, maybe 80, in the 80s, yes. We're talking of 80s now or whatever. So she said, ah, I find this whatever. This is my, go I said, ah, what is it? it? Before you know it, the husband, the TV, thank God now. Is it not that TV? So don't let us be foolish. The almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. This is supposed to Paul. He said, God did not take away Paul's desire to achieve. As you are serving God, you have to balance it. Apostle Paul balance it. In fact, he pay more attention to the ministry as a lawyer, as somebody that achieved it in life. He did not allow the words, though he make mistakes, but the day he met Christ on the way to Damascus, everything changed about him. He made sure that he did not allow the words to cloud, to be cloud, you know, serving the Lord. And I hope that the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. He harnessed it to Paul could fulfill God's will. He made sure that he fulfilled God's will. In whatever we achieve in life, let us make sure that we fulfill God's will. A strong God career, you have a strong career, you are driven, you know, accompanied by desire to learn and everything. In whatever you get, make sure that God is all along with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of my time, let me go quickly because I want to talk to us about our Bible passage. So, I will quickly jump to Jonathan. Let's go to number three. Relational desire. So we talked about number one. What is number one? Material desire. Number two. Number three. Relational. These things, they are correlated. They are correlated. We want to achieve material thing. We want to be an achiever. Then, at the, by the time you get one and two, don't forget your friends. Don't forget those your friends that all along, they were there supporting you. Don't forget those persons that send the resume to you, that help you whatever. Don't forget. 
when you get to that place because you might need them as we are climbing the ladder. So don't just say, I've achieved and you throw the ladder away because you might need the ladder to get down. And the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. And that is, take us to our Bible reading in the book of Psalm, in the first Samuel 18, 1 to 4, that we read. Jonathan was here to the throne. I have never seen, you know, let me use the example, uh, King, uh, Prince uh, Williams, to now say, I dethrone myself. Because if, if Queen died today, it's Williams that is next to the throne. Am I correct? Yeah, I, right? Prince. Oh, Charles, uh, if Charles, Charles is an old man now, I'm looking at what is in line. I'm talking of, you know, Charles is old now. If the uh, queen died, Charles died. Who is in throne? Williams, right? So, queen know that he's there. And maybe after queen, prince, I mean, Charles was able to get there. And Williams now say, I love my friend so much. I'm giving that my aim to my, to my friend. That's what Jonathan did for David. That's what Jonathan, if you read that Bible passage very well, and if you go to chapter 20 of that first Samuel, that's what Jonathan did. He voluntarily gave it up because he knew his friend David was God's choice for the king. He knew. He got the revelation. Does it mean Paul did not get the, Saul did not get the revelation. Saul got the revelation, but he said, this is my lineage. This is my heritage. I must hold on to it. You know, when he disobeyed God. And the almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. We're talking about rich national desire. Jonathan desire to be a friend more than he desire to be a king. How many people were watching, you know, my son trick me, you know, little one, trick me to watch this Jurassic, uh, Jurassic World, right? So they just finished season four and it's so exciting. I never see that to watch, but I saw one person, is he cash? So he's ready to throw this little boy Dyros to the mouth of Raptor the one of the uh, dinosaur so that he can say we use it like this so some people are like that some people are like that so we can see here a true friend jonathan desired to be a friend more than desire to be a king he desired it so how often do you find that how often do we find that number one i want us to know Number one, a true friend will rejoice and celebrate your victory with you. If you have a friend and the moment you say, oh, I just buy my house. And they say, ah, we too, we are even planning to buy our own, own house. And say, oh, how many bedrooms? In fact, we are planning to buy four bedrooms. They just want to kill that job by telling you that this is what they too are planning. And they don't know how long you have been in this country that you have paid it off. And they want to buy us. You even say, start. I started with this one. They say, no, since you are two, three garage door. So I must buy two, three garage door. Instead of starting from condo without a garage. Common elements. The almighty God will deliver in the mighty name of Jesus. So number one, a true friend will rejoice and celebrate your victory with you. Number two. This, what are, these are the character I was able to understand in the life of Jonathan that we read. And I put almost 10 down that I will share with us. Number two, true friend will not look down on you, on your strength. Good friend will not look down on your strength and ability God has placed within you. So Jonathan realized the strength and the ability that God has placed upon, upon, uh, upon David. He knew it. And he never looked down upon it. He recognized it. Even when David was saying, no, 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 no. Your father is number one. David, uh, Jonathan said, don't mind him. I know. He's between me and you. Number three, true friends will be happy with you when you, when, you have, when you have achieved success in any area of your life. They will celebrate you. Even without telling you, they will, they will cause the party for, call the party out for you. That because of this, my friend. Are those three friends, do we still have them? Yes. Just that they are few. 
but we still have them. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, true friend will not jealous of you. They are happy to see you as a friend doing well around them. So Jonathan love it that David was able to play me instrument. David was able to minister to the father. David, whatever David touched, everything was just bluesome. So Jonathan glued to that. He did not jealous. So that is what a good friend. Jonathan gave his armor. That is the thing. Number four, he said, true friend will not jealous of you. They are happy to see you as a friend doing well around them. So if you read that chapter 20 further, you know, I gave us chapter 21 of our Bible reading. 1 Samuel 21 to 42. Jonathan gave his armor, his robe, his sword, his bow and belt to David after winning the battle against Goliath. This, praise the Lord. This is the battle that the king is supposed to win. But for over 40 days, Goliath touted them. They could not come out. And little David came. He won the battle. And what did Jonathan did? Jonathan removed everything in his robe. His king, his royal robe and everything and armor and gave it to David. And I'm sure dear Jonathan, I mean, uh, saw the father would have been saying, what is wrong with this stupid boy? What is wrong with this stupid boy? Did he know that for the father, this boy? But Jonathan put everything aside. He rejoiced with David. And the Almighty God will help us from every unfriendly friend. And he will separate us from them in Jesus' name. Number five, true friends, true friends will not envy in the area which you, are, which you succeeded. But they could, wish you have succeeded and they could not. They still celebrate you. And that is what happened. Jonathan could not succeed. Jonathan could not face Goliath, but he celebrated David after he defeated Goliath. Number six, a true friend delights in you. They like you for who you are. If you have a friend and say, why are you dressing this way? This is how our group dress. So this is how I run away from such friends. A friend will like you the way you are, the way you look. They will add value to you. They will not remove the value that you have. And the almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. So when life gets tough, their friends will not, will not change. That is what it means. Number seven, true friend. We're going to soon go into prayer. Number seven, true friend. Don't all of a sudden appear when life is going well. And disappear when life gets off. <laughs> Have you seen such friends? When the life is going, the idea, the moment you everything go down like this, and you begin to call them, they just they just palm you or they block you or they snooze you or they say they are busy. But when the money come again, what happened? They will reappear. The Almighty God will deliver us from appearing and reappearing friends in the mighty name of Jesus. So uh, when you look at the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 19, verse 1, the Bible says Jonathan delighted greatly in David. It did not say because he won or anything or begin to have, he delighted greatly in David. He liked him for who he was. He liked David for who he was. And so whether his father saw like David or not, did not change him. So I'm talking to us parents dear, this morning. I'm talking to us, Father, this morning. I'm talking to us, children, adults. I'm still children. I'm still baby to my mother. But I know who I am in Christ Jesus. So if my mother has nitty gritty with somebody, she doesn't have right to tell me that that person, you know, he do some, don't greet that person. I will say, Mommy, why won't I greet the person? And this is what happened. Because Saul has already created hatred for David. And uh, I'm sure he would have been warning Jonathan. If you read, because of our time, I've read it over and over. If you read it, you will see every attempt that, uh, that Saul make to block the friendship between Jonathan and David. But he did not succeed. I'm praying for us this morning. Parents, if you're in the house, don't be in that category. Because you are, have arguments with somebody. And you now say, your son wants to greet that person. And you're not, we, we, we have to greet, especially women. God will forgive you. God will forgive you. God will forgive you. And you twist their ear. Why did you greet that woman? Maybe I told you not to greet that woman. Mommy, what? 
somebody that abused me. Ah, you see the way she talked to me. And you talk to God will deliver you, woman. And if you are father, you do the same thing. God will deliver you. I will say my own. So that that glorious money, it will be on record. All that I'm saying now is in record. If I'm the one doing that, God will deliver me through. But I will never do that anyway. I will not do that. But if you are in that category, the Lord will deliver you. Because on that day, in the assembly, general assembly, God will bear me witness that I want you. And the Lord, and if you are the child, you are a teenager, if your mommy is telling you that, ask them why. You know, question here. Why? If you are not friendly with that person, please, I want to make to heaven. I need to say hi to mommy, this one mommy. I need to say hi. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I say the Lord will help you. He will help me in Jesus' name. So whether the Jonathan, whether his father saw like David or not, he did not change him. He just loved David. Number eight, a true friend will speak well of you. They will not tell you all the lovely things and go behind, and go behind you to tell other people bad things about you. I want you to note them down. The moment you notice that kind of friend, run. If you cannot transform their life, then there is problem. Number nine, true friend will not go and tell your business to the world. They have, they have had to see you do well. This, he has done first degree. He couldn't finish it. He, he, he dropped out in second year. He, let's see. He want to do business admin too. Let us see. And by the time they do business admin, oh, he did business admin. He, did, he jumped to science. They will tell the whole world about you. The Almighty God will deliver us from every unfriendly friends in the mighty name of Jesus. The people that will go behind and say negative things about you, the Lord will deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. In that book of 1 Samuel chapter 19 verse 4, 1 Samuel 19 verse 4, the Bible says, Jonathan, I love Jonathan so much. He said, Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul. <laughs> You know, he spoke well of David to Saul. How, how, how bad is that? You know, the father is dying inside. Each time he sees David, the high blood pressure just blah, 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 and they quickly give him his medication. And the Bible say, Jonathan, the son, you know, that is causing that headache for him. He spoke well of David to his father. Ah, God, we have mercy. The Bible say, we, we go for, he said, let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you. Jonathan confronted his father. Now Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son. You know, when you get to verse 4, can you go to verse 4? You can see the discussion. Jonathan, I mean, Saul was poisoning the mind of Jonathan against David. It was verse 1, it was poisoning. It was poisoning. Then when he get to verse 4, Jonathan spoke out. He said, Jonah, then does Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his work has been very good towards you. How many of us can call a spade a spade and stand up to the bully? I pray from this morning, you'll be able to stand up to the bully of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us go quickly because of our time. I want to jump now. I've given us nine. So let me stop at that nine so that we can quickly move forward. Let us quickly move forward. So Jonathan care more about David's safety than David's company. It's not about being in David's company, but about the safety of David. That was what is important to Jonathan. He tell David the truth meant and David will have to move away from him because David did want to keep the company. And Jonathan said, no, your life is more important to me. He is the one that make arrangement to the cave when David have to quickly escape. But David still want to attack. Jonathan said, no, I love the company of both of us, but your safety is more important to me. That is what a friend should do. Jonathan and David's friendship was a covenant. So if you read chapter 20, that's 1 Samuel chapter 20 to the end. The Bible says the soul of Jonathan was knit with David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. 
God's word is telling us this morning. He's telling us this morning that Jonathan and David, I don't know that David in your life, that God wants you to show mercy, that God wants you to show compassion. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and save that soul. Go ahead and support that soul. And the almighty God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I say the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. God use people in our lives to help us through our journey on earth. Be that person that God will use in the journey of somebody's life. And it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Shall we rise up on our feet? As we pray today, power must change hand in the life of someone in Jesus' name. I say the power will change hand in your life. Every of your desire that you have not achieved up to this moment before the end of this year. The, our God is a God that can do anything. 24 hours miracle. He can give it to you. That desire of your heart. I want you to cry unto the Lord and say, Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you from where I am, where you brought me from, where I am right now. I know great and mighty is the place you're taking me to. Father, I bless your name, O Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. Our first prayer point, Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. He said, from now on, let no one trouble me. For I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to open your mouth and try unto the Lord. My father, my father, king of king, lord of lord, from now on, let no man trouble me. Let no man trouble me. Because I bear upon me the mark of the body. The, I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let no man trouble me. Let no man trouble my soul. Let no man trouble my spirit. In the name that is above every other name. In Jesus, mighty name we have prayed psalm 75 verse 6 psalm 75 verse 6 he said, for exhortation comes neither from the east nor, nor from the west, nor from the south, but from the Lord. We're going to cry unto the Lord. You are the God that can promote. Father, promote me, O Lord. Promote me, O Lord. Promotion did not come from the north, nor south, nor west. Promotion comes from you. Father, promote me. Lord of Lord, promote me. Ancient of day, promote me. I am that I am, promote me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Psalm 143, I'm going to jump because of our time. Psalm 143 verse 7. Quickly jump to Psalm 143 verse 7. He said, answer me speedily, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pits. I want you to cry unto the Lord. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayers. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my soul is overwhelmed, lead me to the road that is higher than I. That desire than I open your mouth and say, My father, my father, answer me speedily, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. My desire, O Lord, every of desire of my heart, O Lord, O Lord, my God, answer me speedily, O Lord. Though my spirit might fail, but you are the one that will not fail, O Lord. Do not hide your face from me, O Lord. Do not hide your face from me. Answer me speedily, O Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 jeremiah 1 12 it say then the lord said to me you have seen well for i am ready to perform my word what has god given you what is that revelation what is that vision when you go to the book of habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 3 he said that vision write it down Run with it. It will surely come to pass. You are going to cry unto the Lord. My father, my father. Every vision, every revelation, every upward movement you have, you have given unto me. Father, let there be performance of your word. Let there be performance of your word in my life. Every of your word, every of the greater, great word that you have spoken concerning me. Father, let there be performance, O Lord. Let there be performance, O Lord. Let the vision that you have given me, let it come to pass, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Isaiah 55 verse 11, quickly. Isaiah 55, 11, say, So shall my word be 
that has gone forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of God has been sent forth into our life this morning. I want you to cry to the Lord. Father, every of your word, the greatest word you have spoken concerning me, Father, let there be performance, so Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every of the word of blessing, word of progress, word of promotion that you have spoken to me, your word say it will not return to you void, but it shall accomplish. Let your word be accomplished in my life, oh Lord. Let it be accomplished accomplished, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And every of your word, let it prosper me, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.16. 2 Timothy 2.16. 2, sorry, 2.26. God bless you. And that they may come to thy saints, to their saints, and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. You are going to cry unto the Lord, my father, my father, King of King, Lord of Lord, you will continue to deliver me. I will continue to escape in the mighty name of Jesus. Every snare that is set for me, Father, I will escape. 2021, I will escape in the mighty name of Jesus. No trap of the enemy shall catch me. Father, I will escape in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Isaiah 49, verse 25. Isaiah 49, 25. Isaiah 49, 25 say, But thus says the Lord, even the captives, praise the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contend with you. And I will save your children. You want to cry unto the Lord. As many that are contending with me. Physically, spiritually, materially, financially. Father, contend with them. Lord of Lord, contend with them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Contend with them. As many that are contending with me. Physically, spiritually, materially, financially. Father, contend with them, O Lord. And you will say you will save me. Save me and save my children, oh Lord. Save my children from the terribles of the enemy. Save my children, oh Lord. Especially this part of the world. Save my children, oh Lord. Save them, oh Lord. Save them, oh Lord. Deliver them, oh Lord. From every snare that the enemy has set, every trap, so every bullying in their, in their place of work or in their school. Father, deliver my children, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father and our God, we want to thank you for being our trusted friend. Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you even when others have forsaken us. You help us. Your help. You are a true help, true friend. You help us. You connected us with others who will be true friends as well to us. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Father, we ask of you this morning, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, give us the wisdom to discern who should be part of our inner circle. Father, I pray for your children, O Lord. Give them the wisdom to discern who should be the, the part of their inner circle. In the mighty name of Jesus, help your children to choose their friend who will increase the wisdom instead of those who will sabotage their wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for protection from every negative influences. Father, help, with, help them, O oh Lord. Never, O oh Lord, to connect with those who will negatively influence them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Blessed be to your name, O oh Lord. And as many that are still say, where is my own desire? This is what I desire. And that desire is in line with God, word of God. I pray before the end of this year, your desire will come, will, will be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. Every of your desire and your aspiration shall be fulfilled. You will be an achiever in the mighty name of Jesus. The everlasting of Jehovah will rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God will rest mightily upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Blessed be to your name, O Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Before I submit the microphone, I have, you know, I have dedication this morning. Uh, it is...